This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1834, I've Got a Fun Challenge for You to Improve Your Life, by Rachel Shankin of mindbodywise.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Friday and welcome to the old podcast, the OLD podcast, that stands for Optimal Living Daily, where I read to you like a big ongoing audiobook, but from many different authors. For now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. I've got a fun challenge for you to improve your life by Rachel Shankin of mindbodywise.com. If you choose to take on this fun challenge to improve your life, it could change everything. Have you ever noticed that energy flows where your attention goes? If I suggest that there are a lot of red cars in the streets today, it is likely that you will suddenly notice more red cars than ever before. It works the same way with attitude and perspective. If you focus on all the good that human beings around you are doing, you will see and feel hopeful, happy, and trusting most of the time. If you see the world as filled with bad, dangerous, and selfish people, you will likely feel fearful, sad, and disheartened most of the time. When life is difficult, it's normal to want to complain. Important note, complaining is different than sharing your feelings and taking steps to make change in your life. What begins as some needed venting often leads to an ongoing complaining campaign where you tell your story of woe again and again, enrolling others to validate your bad situation. When you deliver your complaining campaign, it initially makes you feel a bit better, relieved. You aren't alone with it anymore. But if you continue to complain about the same issues over and over, you'll know because you'll tell your story in the same way, it'll all feel incredibly familiar and you'll feel worse after telling it, the worse it is for your health and well-being. Neuroscience has proven that neurons that fire together wire together. So retelling your story continues to deepen your connection to it, which perpetually makes you feel more crappy. Complaining is a way of diffusing dissatisfaction in your life. Sometimes this dissatisfaction originates from a deeper place or from experiences from your past that have shaped who you are today. Consciously choosing awareness and checking in with yourself more deeply is the only way to get in touch with what's really going on, where it originates, and a path toward healing. Complaining may be your outlet for underlying dissatisfaction, but it never fully satiates what you're craving, which is to feel good, happy, and fulfilled. However, if you focus on all that you have and all that's good in your life, you'll generally feel better than if you focus on what isn't working. That said, being honest and balanced about what is and isn't working in your life is healthy. It's the over-complaining, unloading, dumping, and venting that sends your central nervous system into overdrive, which isn't healthy. Complaining also sends out negative energy, even if the complaining is only in your thoughts and you never say it out loud, that people can feel coming from you. They will avoid you unconsciously, which perpetuates your feelings of loneliness and frustration about your situation. The thing is, you can turn this all around. Time for the fun challenge to improve your life. Challenge, commit to taking a complaining hiatus for one week. It's a wonderful experiment and it could just shift everything. Here are the guidelines. Number one, start here. For the next seven days, you will practice taking a conscious break from complaining out loud or in your mind. Number two, become aware and check in. When you notice the desire to complain arising, check in with what you notice happening inside you, i.e. what sensations do you notice in your body? What emotions are surfacing? Number three, refocus. Once you've gotten familiar with your experience of complaining, then take a deep breath in through your nose, release it as a sigh through your mouth, and then shift your focus to something that is working in your life. Number four, be compassionate. If you catch yourself midway into your complaint campaign, that's okay. Breaking habits is hard to do. Try lovingly and compassionately stopping yourself then refer back to number one. Number five, get support. Enroll the closest people in your life about your one-week vow to do this fun challenge, taking a complaining hiatus. Ask them to help you by being on alert for when you are complaining. Request that they lovingly stop you from hurting yourself any further with your words. If they aren't sure how to alert you, let them know that they can simply say, tell me all about what is working in your life. And number six, reflect. At the end of seven days, reflect on how you feel emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. 
You may opt to journal what this experience was like for you. This is all you need to get started. Simple rules and a challenging practice, especially if right now is a more difficult time in your life, but don't let it deter you. Let it propel you forward. Remember, it's only for a week and it's just an experiment to create mini ripples and shifts within, about, and around you. You just listened to the post titled, I've got a fun challenge for you to improve your life by Rachel Shankin of mindbodywise.com. An awesome comments and a note Rachel added, but first, this episode is brought to you by 1010. Now you may have read about this in the New York Times or Forbes, and we're excited to tell you about it. 1010 is an exclusive collection of 10 one-of-a-kind engagement rings designed by 10 of the most distinctive designers working today. Using only diamonds responsibly sourced from Botswana, 10 design masters have each produced a uniquely beautiful commitment ring, launching exclusively on January 18th at bluenile.com. And when they're gone, they're gone. We all know that the diamond engagement ring is iconic, is a timeless expression of the deepest commitment between two people. And with 1010, it's been beautifully re-envisioned in the hands of 10 modern designers working exclusively with sustainably sourced diamonds. If you're making 2021 plans or on the hunt for the perfect ring to wear forever, you're definitely gonna wanna check this out. Again, this exciting limited edition collection of diamond engagement rings launches on January 18th, and you can preview it exclusively at bluenile.com. And thank you to Rachel. Come by mindbodywise.com for a lot more. She had a note that I'll read for you. She said, this doesn't mean to stop voicing your feelings about situations that are bothering you. Please do. Here's what not to do. I'm so tired of my bank account being empty. I can't do anything fun. I can't go out. I'd be lucky if I can pay my rent, let alone eat this week. Here are all the things that suck about not having money. This is complaining, not expressing feelings, and it's neither healthy nor does it initiate change. Here's a healthier option where you voice your feelings and you don't pile on about it. I am feeling sad about struggling financially right now. So I thought that was an important addition to add. Thank you again to Rachel. And that feeling she described in the beginning, I'm sure we've all experienced it. The classic example is if you get a new car. Maybe you think it's original in some way, but only then, after you have the car, do you notice that there are way more on the road than you thought. It doesn't seem so original or special after all. That has a name. It's called the Bader-Meinhof phenomenon. It's a frequency bias. And I do think it completely relates to mindset like Rachel was talking about. Along with the law of attraction, what you focus on becomes your reality. So however you choose to see the world or interpret your world, that will be your reality. It's as simple as that from the theoretical perspective, but actually practicing this in the real world takes time and consistency. Gratitude exercises, journaling, meditation, listening to this podcast, the steps Rachel mentioned in this post, these are all tools you can try to see what works for you over time. Personally, I've found all of them to help in some way or another and some more for me than others, but it does take your own awareness and practice, again, with consistency to make it happen. So keep at it. Have a great Friday and start to your weekend and I'll be back over the weekend. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.